Okay. I think it's going. Thank you, Clara, for reading our scriptures. A line which says, Do not fear, O soil. From chapter 2. But the previous chapter in Joel describes a devastating scene as the prophet shares a lament over the ruin of the country. Joel describes complete devastation by swarms of locusts, leaving the land and its people in ruins. It's unsure if the swarm of locusts are real or a metaphorical description of a physical army of people. Regardless, the destruction appears to be total, kind of like standing at the edge of a drought-stricken field only to watch what is little what little is left to be decimated by hail can you feel it <sighs> the people are hungry and worried they can't offer sacrifices as their traditions expect so they're cut off from worship and the comfort of their gods they have nothing to share with guests, and so they can't gather and are cut off from their communal support of friends and family as well. Everywhere they turn, there is suffering and sorrow. Does it sound familiar? As we gather this Thanksgiving Sunday, there is much suffering and sorrow in our land, too. Often, it feels like everywhere we turn, there is pain, negativity, and growing anxiety. We, too, might feel as if our lives have been taken over by a swarm of locusts. Do not fear, O soil. The prophet Joel calls people to gather, to share their laments, to wail against the injustices and put voice to their grief. He also calls them to repent, to fast and meditate on the words of their elders and all the inhabitants of the land. For the day of the Lord is coming, he tells them. We too are called to gather our hearts and minds this Thanksgiving, to remember the words of our elders and the stories of all who inhabit our lands. For in reconnecting ourselves to the land that feeds us and to the stories of all involved in sourcing our food and livelihoods, we cultivate and nurture gratitude Gratitude that goes beyond being thankful for the size of house we have, the nice clothes we wear, or the, the car we drive, or the feast that is on our tables. This is a gratitude that goes to the core of our being and inspires us to act. It's a gratitude so deep that amid devastation, it returns us to God with all our hearts. It's a gratitude that fully embodies God's abundant grace and love, reflecting God's promise to return us to wholeness and to never leave us. Do not fear, O soil. Friends, on this day we have much to remember so much to lament and so very much to be grateful for. As we sit around our tables recounting all that we are thankful for, may we also recall the fullness of the stories of our nation. May we be mindful that there are many contested lands. 
places of unimaginable destruction of spirit and soil, places of turbulence, chaos, and worry. As we gather this weekend, may we hold in our hearts places like Israel and Palestine, China and Taiwan, as well as the traditional territories of indigenous peoples here and around the world. May we give thanks for work done towards righting past wrongs and building peace. May we share of our abundance through our commitment to actions that enable the healing of land and people. May we render our hearts to God. As we sit around our tables this weekend, may our gratitude go deeper than the delicious food on our plates. May we acknowledge all involved in bringing food from pasture and fields to our tables. May we take seriously our responsibility uh, to be stewards of creation and ensure the sustainability of our practices. May we advocate for the just sharing of resources so that all may be fed. And may we share our knowledge of food production and preservation with younger generations. May we render our actions to God. As we sit around our tables, may our conversations plant seeds of joy and cultivate gratitude. The cries of lament and wails of suffering are so loud in our world right now. It can consume our hearts and infiltrate our words and actions if we let it. May we be mindful of God's gracious zeal and the prophet that the prophet Joel and the psalmist share with us this day. May our mouths be full of the great things God has done for us. May we be satisfied with all that we have, for we are truly blessed. And may we render our thoughts to God. Friends, this Thanksgiving, or just whenever the pressure of life feels overwhelming, may we recall with gratitude God's promise to be always in our midst. May we remember that we are God's beloved people and as such are called to live accordingly. May our hearts thoughts, and actions become reflections of God's unconditional love and grace. Do not fear, O soil, for we render our lives to God this day. We lift our voices in deep gratitude. We plant seeds of joy. For the day of our Lord is coming. And we are the ones to bring it. May it be so. Amen. I invite you to join me in singing for the fruit of all creation.